Hey everybody, hope this finds you doing well. This is Danelle. Welcome back. If you're new, welcome. Today with Network Chain, we are going to talk about Bitcoin, of course, what's happening in the cryptocurrency markets this past week, as well as some of the biggest news stories, mostly related to Bitcoin over the past week, and what the future could be lying ahead for us all in the cryptocurrency markets. Let's go ahead and get started. As usual with the cryptocurrency market update, Bitcoin currently trading at $69,300. It's up a little over 2% over the past seven days. It actually leaped up to a little over $71,000 earlier this week. So there has been a little bit of a dip over the last couple of days. We'll see if that dip will continue to come down further or if we'll have another spike back up into the 70,000 plus range going into this week. We have Ethereum trading at 3,682. So we had that news of the Ethereum ETFs being approved, but there's still a lot of red tape that the issuers have to go through in order to have it actually change or trade, excuse me, on the exchange, on uh, New York Stock Exchange, etc. So we're still waiting for those filings and for that finally to be approved for trading, for public trading. So it still could be a little bit of time from now. But Ethereum, after a little bit of that bump from that news, has come back down to earth a little bit, down 3.82% in that $3,600 range. We have BNB. They reached an all-time high over the past week. They are trading at $682, up 13% over the last seven days. We have Solana. It's down a little bit, nearly 5% at 158 XRP still trading in that 50 cent range. It seems like they've been trading in that range for a very, very, very long time. Dogecoin down a little bit, down 8.6% actually over the last seven days under that 15 cent range. Then you have Tuncoin and Cardano rounding out the top 10. So as we mentioned earlier, Bitcoin did have a spike up above 71,000 earlier in the week. And if we look at the past five days, we were up to just almost just under $72,000. And now you see we had that dip on June 7th. So we will continue to obviously keep you posted on what's happening with the Bitcoin price. But sometimes you have to zoom out. So if we look at year to date, you can see that Bitcoin is still performing very well, not only post having, but even pre having the having happened in April. And you can see year to date, Bitcoin is up over 56%. So sometimes you just got to zoom back. We're still kind of trading in this range. This actually isn't bad. We're still probably in this accumulation range. So just continue to keep stacking. If that's something that you're interested in doing, make sure you do your own research when it comes to deciding what to invest in. Obviously, Bitcoin and other digital assets and cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile. So you want to make sure that you know what you're doing before you make an investment. So we wanted to talk a little bit more about what's happening with Bitcoin and all the institutions and the worldwide wide interest that has come to Bitcoin, particularly over the past year. We had the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the United States earlier this year in January, and it has been a resounding success having over $15 billion of inflows come into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. And now we're seeing that other countries are following in the U.S. footsteps. You can see Asia, their first spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs debuted in Hong Kong in April of this year. And so initially it started off a little bit slow, but it seems like now they're starting to pick up some of their inflows. And so that was a big deal to have Hong Kong uh, have the first ETFs being traded. And so we wouldn't be surprised if there will be other countries in the area that will follow suit. Actually, we do know so far that Thailand is one of the next countries in the Asian region that has decided to open its doors to a Bitcoin ETF, as you can see here, in a prominent move reflecting the growing mainstream acceptance, which is very true of cryptocurrencies. Thailand's, their own SEC, has launched the country's first Bitcoin exchange traded fund. And so this development marks a pivotal move for both the crypto currency industry and of course the broader investment landscape in Thailand. So in Asia we have Hong Kong, we soon will be having Thailand 
And I'm sure there will be several other countries coming down the line in that region that will be interested in investing into Bitcoin. You can't deny the returns. Obviously, there's lots of volatility. If you don't dollar cost average or if you don't time the market right, which is extremely difficult to do, you could definitely lose a lot if you don't know what you're doing. But if you're looking at Bitcoin over the long term, if you look and zoom out like we just did earlier when we looked at the year to date chart, if you zoom out and look at the performance of the last five years, the performance since its exception, inception 14 years ago, when it first traded in 2009, so really 15 years ago, excuse me, you can see that Bitcoin, there's nothing like it in the market right now. When you compare it to the S&P 500, when you compare it to a lot of the other major indices in the public stock market, there's no comparison. Even when it comes to gold, people now obviously calling Bitcoin digital gold, there's no comparison when you look at the long term, if you zoom out and look at the long term returns of Bitcoin. Also this past week, which made major news is that Australia, they launched their first spot Bitcoin ETF with that ETF holding Bitcoin directly. So there actually was another Bitcoin adjacent type of ETF that had already launched, but this is the first one that officially is going to have an issuer that holds Bitcoin directly, the monochrome asset management Bitcoin ETF known as IBTC just began began trading on the CBOE of Australia. They have a little bit of a higher management fee compared to the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US at 0.98%. So they're definitely buying at a premium, but this is just another indication of the interest that is in Bitcoin, not only by retail investors, but also by institutions. They're, you can't deny, once again, those uh, gains. And so now institutions, not only in the United States, but also around the world are interested in getting a piece of what many are calling digital gold. As you can see here, the development in Australia follows the successful launch of the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US. And these ETFs have seen considerable success reflecting strong investor interest and confidence in Bitcoin. So we also have Bitcoin ETPs, which are basically called exchange traded products, similar to exchange traded funds that have gone live on the London Stock Exchange. And then you also have Bitcoin exchange traded commodities, which have gone live in Germany as well. So once again, as we mentioned, it's further highlighting the global trend towards accessible Bitcoin investment products. So it's really exciting to see what's happening around the world. This is a network, a payment platform, a secure store of value that cannot be manipulated by any sovereign nation or government. And so that's why there's a lot of interest in Bitcoin. A lot of people believe that it can be and will be eventually a hedge against inflation and a store of value because a lot of fiat currencies are continuing to be inflated by the printing of the Federal Reserve in the United States as well as other countries that are also uh, printing more of their fiat currencies given the economic landscape currently. And so a lot of people are hurting. So we just want to provide information as much as we can, especially when it comes to learning how to invest, learning how to make your dollar work for you, especially when that dollar is losing purchasing power. What is it that we can put that dollar into so it doesn't not only lose purchasing power, but also gains purchasing power. And right now we believe that Bitcoin is one of those assets that has a great possibility of being able to do that for us. So make sure to keep posted here at Network Chain, not only on YouTube with our weekly YouTube videos, but also on X as well as IG. And just two quick other stores that we'll get into. Coinbase continuing to expand. They have introduced the smart, smart wallets. They um, announced it a while ago, but now it has officially kicked off and these smart wallets are allowing for us as users to have more autonomy over our digital assets. So you can go here to the Coinbase blog to learn a little bit more about smart wallets. And basically it's making getting on chain simpler. You don't have to worry about the seed phrases 
all you need to do to open up this wallet is be able to use a fingerprint or face ID using either Android or Apple uh, phones. You can also access it via your laptop. So there's ways that you'll be able to mint NFTs, be able to, to trade your crypto as well as transfer your crypto be able to do a lot of different things on the blockchain using this smart wallet and lastly we'll mention that robin hood which uh is now looking to expand globally has acquired the crypto exchange bitstamp for 200 million dollars so they're diving even deeper into the cryptocurrency market they do allow trading of certain cryptocurrencies on their um application but now by buying bitstamp it's going to give them more exposure to particularly europe because it's well known and well used in the europe region and so now they will also have access to institutional clients Robinhood is definitely looking to get into digital assets and dive a little bit deeper than what they already have so this just goes to show that traditional finance is definitely being shaken up we're seeing that these new financial services firms and brokerages are looking to expand into digital assets and cryptocurrency so this is just the beginning so just make sure that you learn as much as you can about what we believe is the future of finance don't take our word for it definitely go do the research on your own but we really appreciate you coming back and if not coming back we welcome you. Please come back again to watch us here at Network Chain. We'll try to keep you posted on everything related to emerging markets, particularly in cryptocurrencies and digital assets. In the meantime, we look forward to catching up and linking up with you on the Network Chain. Take care. Bye-bye.